It is the Flow Friday Night Sports Show, and uh, the head kangaroo is on tour right now. Uh, Caitlin Vine is off gallivanting around the countryside, I believe. So, uh, in typical Caitlin Vine fashion, one of the more organised human beings you'll ever meet in life, uh, she has rustled me up a suitable replacement. Now, I wonder if she gets her organisational skills from our next guest. Uh, keeping it in the family, Mum Raylene Vine joins me on the line right now. How are you, Raylene? I'm really good, thank you. And uh, yes, she is a bit of an organiser, always has been. <laughs> gets that from Mum, does she? Oh, some of it, not all of it. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you're still heavily involved with the Ian Kangas as well. Tell us about your role with the club. Uh, well, I coach a couple of sides. I umpire every week and I'm on the committee and I've been involved for a fairly long time. Yeah, and uh, the Kangas, uh, in your time recently, they're going beautifully as a club. Uh, at the moment, um, uh, throughout all of the grades, I mean, traditionally the Kangas have been pretty strong um, on the netball court in the uh, the top grade, but uh, it's good to see now uh, the juniors are coming along beautifully. Caitlin's very proud of them and I'm sure you are as well. I am exceptionally proud of them. They're really putting in, listening to their coaches, putting it on the court and reaping the benefits. So it's exciting for us on the sidelines and for them. Yep, and uh, for the parents that turn up every week and cheer them on and the community as well. I mean, that's the thing. The communities of Oyen and Underball get behind this club like uh, not well, like few others in Sunraysia football and netball, I think it's fair to say. Yeah, we have a great following and uh, it's not just on Saturdays. You know, they turn up on Thursdays, they're following things on the Facebook, they read the local paper and get the reports in there and yeah, it's really positive. Yeah. A positive game on the weekend as well, uh, away from home against, uh, well, um, a, a really solid Imperials outfit in the, uh, the A-grade game. Uh, a good win for the Kangas, forty six to thirty eight, gets them back on track. Uh, what did you make of the uh, the game? Well, it wasn't an easy game. It was very, very close right through. It was only in the last quarter the Kangas made a little bit of uh, positional changing, and it paid off. It just uh, opened it up and gave a bit more drive to the ring uh, because Imperials, you can never underestimate Imperials. They are a passionate side and they put in 100% and they're, they're building um, I'm not sure what their position was with COVID this week but uh, we had uh, players out and um, I'm sure all clubs are doing that too so a lot of experimentation and side building at the moment but wasn't an easy win but a very good win A win is a win is a win I know that's an old cliche but uh, look at the end of the day through these times where you just don't know who you're going to have available from one week to the next, uh, you just take the points that you can get when you can get them, right? Oh, we do, because things change overnight from Friday to Saturday, and it's um, been quite testing, quite interesting, but it's also given some um, young ones in particular some opportunities that they wouldn't have had. Yeah, that is true. And, and look, uh, coaching's a tough enough gig at the best of times, but uh, when you uh, you can't let the phone out of your side on a Friday night, uh, <laughs> it's even tougher. And for the administrators, it's on Saturday morning too because then you've got to do all those online changes. They're <laughs> yeah. fun. <laughs> that is true. Uh, really good weekend for the uh, for the whole club. Uh, in fact, I think uh, you had a clean sweep of the senior matches against the Imperials, which is fantastic. Uh, I think uh, a couple of wins in the junior grades as well. We did, yes. Um, our 15 twos and our 17 twos, and even though it's unofficial, the 11 ones um, had a really good win too. But no, we don't score, but they do in their heads. <laughs> exactly. They they go to school and let everyone know that they, whether they won or lost. Don't worry about that. Exactly. <laughs> so they should. Good on them. Um, let's have a look at the other A-grade matches from around the competition before we move on to who's playing who this week. So Irimple took on Wentworth and, well, gee whiz, uh, Wentworth just keep on keeping on, don't they? Uh, big oh, winners. Yes. Big winners here, 75-32. They're a good unit. They certainly are. And Amanda Edwards uh, at goal attack, she threw over 50 goals on Saturday which earned her netball of, netballer of the round, um, and it's well-deserved. She, she's a class act. Yeah. Uh, and so, I think we'll be in rebuilding mode. So, they um, are, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, they won't be in that mode for long. They bounce back pretty quick, that mob. So, oh, yes. Yeah. Yep. 
South Mildura, uh, they took on Robin Vale Euston and a uh, much needed win for the South crew, a, uh, 48 to 42. Not much in that either. Not much in that at all. And I think it was fairly close throughout. And it, once again, it was just the last quarter when um, South got away from Robin Vale. You know, Robin Vale at two is another team you just can't underestimate. They have classy defence. Uh, and move the ball really well. And they're usually happy to shoot from out, um, not going to overuse the ball, just trying to get it under the post. And uh, they're pretty good at distance shots. So never, never go there thinking you're going to beat Robin Vale. She was uh, – Robin Vale need the super netball set up. Well, when you get to two points <laughs> from outside the arc, something like that. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, sometimes, sometimes. Yeah. Red Cliffs, uh, the story of the season, the Red Cliffs girls, but they, they couldn't get it done against Mildura this week. They've dropped out of the four for now, but uh, they're uber competitive again, uh, 46 to 29. Mildura, pretty good side. Mildura is a pretty good side. Uh, they've got – youth and experience and uh, they work together as a unit. They're very athletic and they position well. They they have good strategies and uh, it'll be interesting when we finally get to them. Mm. Uh, it's a uh, familiar looking top four at the moment uh, in Sunrise <laughs> and Hepball. They're all there. Wentworth, Mildura, South Mildura and Owen United. There's your top four at the moment. I Rimple have sort of swapped places with Mildura, I guess, this season. So I think you're right, yep. It looks that way uh, in the early going. So that leads us back to who's playing who this weekend. So let's have a look at, first of all, the Owen United Kangas. Well, we get to have a look at Redcliffe's up close and personal this week. They're coming to Blackburn Park. They are coming to Blackburn Park and we're playing for the Cure Cup. We play for the Cure Cup in both netball and football in honour of our former Owen United president, Tony Cure, who came to us from Redcliffe mm. um, late last century. <laughs> um, but uh, his family is involved with Redcliffe and in Owen, so it's, it's always a big event. Mm. And uh, we have um, a lot to play for. Yeah, and unfortunately, Tony's no longer with us, but uh, I'm sure he'll be looking down proudly at uh, this fixture and uh, his two former clubs going at it. And uh, I think it's an honour whenever you get uh, a, a fixture or a cup named after you, So, uh, and a very worthy one in this case. Exactly. And he, he was a great leader, and um, it's, it's a pleasure to still honour him. And his uh, son and daughter are both heavily involved in the club. Fantastic. So uh, be a, a cracking game. I won't ask you to tip because that would be redundant. Uh, <laughs> we're uh, hoping the Kangas win, of course, and fair we enough. Are. We're unashamedly biased in this segment. Absolutely. And you know, once again, we haven't seen Redcliffe. We didn't see them at all last year. Mm. And uh, all the hype around them this year is uh, leading up to an exciting match. Uh, Steph O'Loughlin in there is hard to play on, but um, we've got defenders who position well, jump well, read the ball really well. So it's going to be a cracker. It will be. Robin Vale Houston have the bye. So have a look at some of these other matchups too. Boy, goodness. Uh, Wentworth will beat Imperials. That one we can pretty much put down in the book, you'd think. The margin will be of interest there. I think it will. Uh, if they stay on the track they've been on, it could be similar to last week. But once again, Imperials, if they've got a couple of players back, uh, they'll take it up to them. Yep. No uh, doubt about that. And that's right. Who knows what's happening with the spicy cough in Wentworth as well. So uh, um, tipping is dangerous uh, at the moment, just about as dangerous as coaching, I reckon. It is, but I wouldn't wish it on anyone. No, definitely not. Uh, what about these other two games? Goodness me. Uh, Mildura and South Mildura. I think these two clubs love it when they're uh, relatively even on the ladder. It just adds to the spice that already exists between the two. Well, there's only 2% separating them. So mm. it is anyone's game. I think it'll all come down to matchups on the day. Mildura might have the edge, um, but even goal difference isn't massive. So it'll be... Fascinating to see the outcome of that one. I, I don't mind saying this. I've got absolutely no idea who's going to win that game, and that's the way we like it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's much the same with this one. Murpeen and Irimple, albeit uh, both sides sort of rebuilding, or in Irimple's case, rebuilding. Murpeen's still trying to build uh, build up. So 
Um, they're both in different stages of their development, but uh, they find themselves pretty evenly matched, I reckon. Well, they are. Merbeans below Irimpool on points, but above them on percentage. So the balance is very much on an even keel. So I think it's going to be on the day how the coaches swing the positions more than anything else or who we, who brings their A game, really. Yep. Uh, at the end of the day, when in doubt, pick the home team. So I might go with Merbeen there, but with absolutely no confidence. I agree with you. <laughs> well, it's going to be another cracking round. Round six of matches in uh, Sunraysia Netball. And Raylene, anything else uh, to mention before we wrap up? Um, I think we've got some good things happening in our B grade. And as I mentioned earlier, some young people having some opportunities. And we had young Lily Cadenac who got her first run in B grade last week and did exceptionally well. Uh, She said she was very, very nervous, but she had an absolute ball and she's just hoping she gets another opportunity. So it's great to bring these younger ones up. And we've already mentioned our juniors, um, and, of course, we've got a rotating dinner for um, anyone who wants to join that after the match. So we're looking forward to a really good day out. We always enjoy having Red Cliffs here. Yep, that's the other thing we love about the own United Kangas. When there's a home game, there's always something happening. <laughs> got to do it, got to do it. <laughs> Raylene, well done. Uh, we always love chatting to the head Kanga, but it's nice to mix it up and chat to the head Kanga's mum as well. Um, I'm sure uh, Caitlin will come back uh, tanned and relaxed from uh, North Queensland and lucky well, her, right? <laughs> yeah, lucky her. Anyway, it's nearly time for her to come back. Uh, we look forward to seeing her tomorrow night, ready to play Saturday as well. <laughs> no rest for the wicked. Good on you, Raylene. All the best. Thank you very much. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Bye-bye.